In this module, we are going to prove a very important property of the integral called the linearity. If you are familiar with linear algebra, the next theorem, why it is called linearity will make more sense. However, just with the statement, even if you are not familiar with linear algebra, you will agree that calling this property linearity is a good idea. So this is the theorem. This is the theorem. Let f, comma g from a b to r b Riemann integrable. So you are given two Riemann integrable functions. Then, then number one, integral a to b of k f is equal to k times integral a to b of f for all k in r. If you multiply the function by a constant k, then integrability is preserved. Moreover, the integral value is just k times integral a to b f. 2. Integral a to b f plus g is integral a to b f plus integral a to b g. So, in particular, in particular f plus g, f plus g is Riemann integrable. So, the sum of two Riemann integrable functions is indeed Riemann integrable and not only that, the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals as you would expect. Now, let us go on to the proof. The proof of 1 is, the proof of 1 is easy. So, I am going to leave it to you to figure out how to prove 1. Let us start by proving 2. So, proof of 2 proof of 2. Okay. So, now what we have to do is, we have to show that f plus g is Riemann integrable and not only that, we have to show that the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. So, what you do is, given any partition, given any partition, partition p of a b, we have the following chain of inequalities. So, this following chain of inequalities is the heart of the proof. We have L of F P plus L of G P is less than or equal to L of F plus G comma P which in turn is less than or equal to u of f plus g comma p is less than or equal to u of f p plus u of g p. We have this chain of inequalities. Let us see why we have this chain. Now, first of all, certain inequalities here are straightforward. This inequality L of f plus g p is less than or equal to u of f plus g p just follows from one of the basic facts about upper sums and lower sums. Why is this first inequality true? Well, think about what is happening. In each one of these partitions, we are going to take the sum, summation small m i delta x i. Okay? Now, what will happen is, when you take the minima of the functions f and g, then in general, the minima of f plus g will be greater than or equal to to the minimum of f plus the minimum of g. Okay? So, this inequality follows, follows from the fact, fact that, that minimum, minimum of f comma g is less than or equal to or rather here it was the infimum though it turns out to be the minimum also infimum of f plus g of x as x runs through some set x k x k plus 1 let us say this is less than or equal to infimum of uh, not less than or equal to greater than or equal to greater than or equal to infimum of f of x plus infimum of g of x as x runs through the same set. Okay? So, 
what is happening is when you take the sum of these two functions so a graph will illustrate what is happening okay if I take this to be the graph of f and this to be the graph of g now there is the minima of the function f is clearly here whereas the minima is here and they are not coinciding Unless they coincide, it will not happen that infimum of f plus g is equal to infimum of f plus infimum of g. So because of this, when you take the lower sum on each subinterval x k x k plus 1, the terms coming here will dominate the sum of these two terms, the corresponding sum of these two terms. So because of this, this first inequality is true. In an entirely analogous way, we have this inequality that u of f plus g comma p is less than or equal to u of f p plus u of g p. Again, when you take the sum of the maxima or supremum of f plus g on a particular interval x k x k plus 1, it is highly unlikely that the points at which f attains supremum and g attains supremum, it is highly unlikely that they will coincide. Because of this, it will turn out that the supremum of f plus g of x as x runs through that interval is in general less than or equal to the supremum of f plus supremum of g. Okay, So, we get this chain of inequalities. Now, how does this chain of inequalities help? Well, we can have, we have full flexibility over the choice of partition. We can choose, we can choose, choose a partition a partition p such that u of f p minus l of f p is less than epsilon by 2 and similarly we can choose such that u of g p minus l of g p is less than epsilon by 2. Note I have said you can choose a single partition such that both of these inequalities are simultaneously satisfied. The, this is coming from the criterion for Riemann integrability. We know that f and g are Riemann integrable. Therefore, we can find a partition such that u of fp minus l of fp is less than epsilon by 2. Similarly, you can find another partition such that u of gq minus l of gq is less than epsilon by 2. But I have written the same partition because we can take the common refinement p union q and this will still be true. That common refinement I am continuing to call p. Okay, so we can choose a partition such that u of f p minus l of f p is less than epsilon by 2 and u of g p minus l of g p is also less than epsilon by 2. What this gives is u of f p plus u of g p minus l of f p minus l of g p is less than epsilon. Is less than epsilon. Okay, so excellent. What does this give? Let's go back a little bit up. What do we have? We have L of fp plus L of gp as the right extreme and u of fp plus u of gp as the right extreme. What this says is that we immediately get u of f plus g comma p minus L of f plus g comma p is less than epsilon. Okay, because because this inequality is true for the left and right extremes, it has to be true for anything that is sandwiched in between as well. Okay, So, this will show, this shows, this shows that, that uh, the function that f plus g is Riemann integrable. That much is clear. Now, what remains to be shown is that the sum of the in, uh, the integral of the sum is the sum of the integral. Why does that follow? Well, let's think for a moment. We know that the integrals exist. Therefore, this integral value has to be the supremum of L of f plus g p or the infimum of u of f plus g p as you run through all partitions, right? But as you run through all partitions, we still have the inequalities L of f plus g p plus, uh, sorry, not L of f plus g p, L of f p plus L of g p is less than or equal to L of f plus g p is less than or equal to u of 
एफ जी एफ पी प्लस यू ऑफ जी पी आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग पार्ट ऑफ दिस इन इक्वालिटीज सो वी आर गोइंग टू टेक द इनफीम एज यू रन थ्रू ऑल पार्टिशन ऑफ द क्वान्टिटी एल ऑफ एफ प्लस जी कम अप पी दैट्स वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू सो क्लियरली वॉट वी विल गेट इज इंटेग्रल ए टू बी इंटेग्रल ए टू बी एफ प्लस इंटेग्रल ए टू बी जी is less than or sorry we are not going to take the supremum scratch that we are going to take the supremum of l of f plus b sorry about that the integral is obtained by taking the supremum of the lower sums or the infimum of the upper sums okay so we get integral a to b f plus integral a to b g is certainly going to be less than or equal to integral a to b f plus g okay that's just coming from the first inequality wait a second i i should write the other inequality also that is u of f plus gp is less than or equal to u of fp plus u of gp now this is what we obtain from the first inequality from the second inequality taking infimum on both sides you will get integral a to b f plus integral uh, sorry integral a to b f plus g a to b f plus g is less than or equal to integral a to b f plus integral a to b g okay putting these two together we get the desired result integral a to b f plus g is equal to integral a to b f plus integral a to b g okay so this concludes the proof the sum the integral of the sum is the sum of the integral we are done we are done okay so this property that we have done that integral a to b kf is k times integral a to b f and integral a to b f plus g is integral a to b f plus integral a to b g is called linearity so essentially what will happen is if you consider the collection of all riemann integrable functions that's usually denoted by the script r the collection of all riemann integrable functions is usually denoted by script r ab this is a collection of functions which can be made into a vector space over the real numbers okay and you have a linear transformation that is the integral acting on r of ab it's actually a linear functional this allows us to study integration from the perspective of linear algebra now this is not part of this course but it is worth knowing okay so if you are familiar with linear algebra i urge you to explore the properties of riemann integral as a linear functional this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the linearity of the riemann integral